The first question is, why do you think Peter uh, resisted Jesus washing his feet? Jesus was above him, and like in their culture, like uh, servants did that. Like, it's sometimes not even the Jew servants, like the lowest of the low people did that. And so, like, having the, the, the universe washing the feet, he was like putting himself as the lowest of the low of people. Um, and he's like, uh, no, no, you're like, you're above me, and I'm a Jew, and then you're doing the work of like, the previous Yeah, I don't even know what it could be compared to. Yeah, he did. Yes, um, I did. I didn't. I, I, I don't detect. know what we could compare it to, but uh, the closest thing I can think of uh, off the top of my head is if uh, Mrs. Frog came to your house, or if um, I don't know the governor or the president or somebody came to your house and said, "I'm going to wash your car for you." I don't have a car. No, you're not. <laughs> Can you give me a license for you? I'm going to clean your room for you, or something like that. I mean, you're just going to give me a car. That's not your. That's, you shouldn't be doing that for me, right? And, and so, yeah, I think that that had something to do with it. I think they were shocked. We'll talk about that when we get to the lecture. I know they were shocked at what was happening. Um, any other answers to that? Anybody else? Okay. So, uh, next page. What attitude did he show in his resistance? Your your uh, curriculum takes a has a has a specific take on this. Um, I don't know if we can. Um, yeah, personally, I feel like he was like trying to respectfully say, "Hey, no, I'm following you, not the other way around." Yeah. Yeah, and again, I think he was shocked, right? And he blurted something out, which is very Peter, but I think a lot of people blurt things out when they're shocked, right? And uh, now the, the curriculum says that it was um, that it was pride disguised as humility. I, I don't know how they can know that. Uh, I really, I mean, he says, you're going to wash my feet? And, and, and it's because he's so shocked. This is not, it literally it's unheard of. We'll talk about that more um, when we get to the, the lecture. Um, what attitude did it take for Peter to yield and allow his teacher and master to continue? Humility? Humility, absolutely. It, humility. Uh, he had to humble himself to allow that, I guess. And I was just like, Jesus kind of like put a mild threat out there. He was like, if you don't let me do this, then what do you say? You have no party. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, no, basically no. nothing to do with me. And that, that changed his mind. Like, oh, okay, okay, don't do that, Jesus, right? Yeah. He also had to accept that he was not going to understand it. I'm not going to understand why he has to know, but he was a bitter. Makes it, it all makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, why do you think that Jesus would have permitted an unbeliever to infiltrate his inner circle? Yeah. I just said that it followed the Father's plan and it would lead to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was all part of the Father's plan from the beginning. And, and Scripture tells us that, guys, Scripture tells us that Jesus knew from the beginning. He chose Judas knowing which is, it is even more <coughs> which is even don't give me that um, so uh, yeah he he, um, uh, he knew from the beginning that and he chose Judas um, the events seem to show plainly that Judas was the betrayer. If you were one of the disciples, what might have you what might have made you think that he was needing to take care of the group? Jesus trusted him. Jesus trusted him, but there's one other little bit of information. Yes. Um, 
Right, he's doing the business because he's in charge of the of the land. Yes, as of the land. Yeah, I mean, he, he, Jesus didn't exactly say that, but he yeah. said, "What what do you what do you need to do to be perfect?" Uh, and what that was could have been interpreted very much better. Um, if you were Peter, how would you have felt when you heard Jesus predict that he would be dying? Very defensively. Oh, I would never do that. Like he did, right? Ever. Would never do that. And I'm sure he was very certain of his own ability to stay uh, true to Jesus. Yes? Might have been like Jesus told you. My aunt's. Yeah. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. Because he's one of the inner circle, right? He, he, they knew. Peter, James, and John knew they were in the inner circle, right? And uh, so they were even closer to Jesus than everybody else. Yes. Uh, yeah, kind of going off what she said, it's like a little bit of like also kind of hurt because like your best friend is literally telling you, yeah, you're going to betray me when I need you most, and like, ow. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that. You know, and he's really sure of himself, and that was a typical Peter thing. Uh, he, he jumps out onto the water, <coughs> then he thinks. That's one of the reasons why I, I love Peter so much. Uh, okay, good job with that. Uh, now you can turn to the teacher lesson, and uh, we'll start this lecture, and get what we get done, and we'll like we can make a new recording. What? Do you need me to stop and make a new one? No, I want to just keep on going because I go back to that. That says just keep going. Um, now, there's parts of this that I'm going to skip, and primarily I'm going to skip the timeline for reasons that you already understand. Uh, they're saying this is Wednesday night. <coughs> Uh, I was going to go through the whole thing and tell you uh, when things uh, happened according to the ESV Bible, but you know what? Um, you can if you if that if that is one if that's something that just like really trips your trigger, you're just like I don't know that. I'll let you borrow this peaches and you can read the whole thing. So mm -hmm. um, so uh, we're going to start here in on in John 13. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is this features? Oh, my Bible. Oh. My Bible is this features Bible, right? Oh. Yeah. 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 I got it so cheap oh. because it was used. Yeah. Yeah, not was used, it was current. And you can see under where it was. What do you call that? Oh, yeah. It was a monogram, whatever. And it says, uh, says features. So I'm really grateful it says features. The Bible because I got it for cheap and it's very expensive. So, um, yeah, because I wish it was. I don't know. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe she never did it just love Jesus. I hope she does. Doesn't she have like a clergy title though? Like, I can't even know. In, in uh, black churches, they call each other sister and, and brother, and so she would have got her, her name, they would have called her sister. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world, I wonder if there was crazy. Probably, but I should be hearing voices. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So, this whole story, and, and not just this whole story, the rest of the Passion account is done for one person, one purpose, and one purpose only the love of Christ. 
and how deeply and how greatly uh, he loves us and he loves us uh, to the end. So um, this is the Passover. And, and, and actually what Jesus and his disciples were, um, were celebrating was the Passover meal. Um, and so it was the most important uh, night in Judaism. Passover was the highest, holiest meal. Um, so we need to talk a little bit um, about this, this uh, dinner, uh, this Right, that they did, uh, because this is the, the biggest night of the year. This is the most important night of the year. So, what does the Passover celebrate? Yes. The lamb's blood on the doors and the spirit of death passing over the people. It commemorates the Exodus. Right. So, all, all of that, right? So, so the, the big picture is it commemorates the Exodus. The pa it's called the Passover because the angel of death passed over those uh, homes that had the lamb's blood on their doorposts, and uh, that was the Jews that had that uh, on their doorposts. So it was on that night that they gathered, and the angel of death passed over. Um, real quick, do you think uh, if the Jews had any Egyptian friends, do you think they passed that news on to their their Egyptian friends and they did it too, or do you think it was? If I remember correctly, not from the movie, but from physical movie, but anyway, um, if I'm remembering correctly, they were commanded that they were supposed to do something. So, um, yeah. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean um, and so uh, it uh, so it's the feast of the Passover, uh, and it's commemorating all of that. Uh, and I believe that John uh, talks about it being the Egyptian Passover, which is kind of weird uh, because he did, the, the angel of death didn't pass over the Egyptians; he passed pass over the Jews. Passover of the, of the Jews, but it happened in Egypt. Um, and so, um, uh, and you can read about that in Exodus 12. So, um, I'm just going to give you the Reader's Digest version of it. I, I assume that you are familiar with it, but the, um, but, um, the, um, you got to start probably with Joseph. Joseph goes down to Egypt, he's his slave. He ends up being the number two guy in Egypt. He brings, there's famine. He brings his family, his whole family to Egypt, uh, and he cares for them. And then generations go on, and a pharaoh comes into uh, power who does not remember Joseph, who doesn't know the story of Joseph, or maybe he doesn't care. But he sees that the Jews are growing, they are prospering, they become a threat to him. Uh, because they are not Egyptian, and they might revolt, and they might uh, overthrow us, and so he enslaves them. And they're enslaved there for 400 years, and, uh, and God brings a deliverer in the form of Moses. Um, and, uh, but Pharaoh's heart is hardened. There it, it says different things in different places. Sometimes it says Pharaoh hardened his heart, and sometimes it says God hardened him. That's a whole interplay that we don't have time to get into, but it's, it's very fascinating. Uh, like, is it okay for God to hard the hearts? And why is it that? But, but he wasn't hardening a heart uh, soft. Does that make sense? It's not like, uh, you know, Pharaoh was going, no, 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 I love the Jews. I'm going to take care of them. And No, he was hardening a heart that was already hard. Um, so, um, so there are these ten plagues. Uh, and um, the, the first couple of plagues that, you know, Pharaoh's like, what else? I don't care. But it be, then there is this long time where a plague comes and Pharaoh goes, okay, you can go, but we gotta, we're going to keep everyone under a certain age or something like that. Nope, everybody goes. And then, and then there's this point where he says, okay, just go, just get out of here. And then he changes his mind. And he changes his mind. I read Exodus 
earlier this year, and I, I, I counted the number of times he changed his mind, but it was a, a lot of times that he changed, four or five times he changed, changed his mind. Um, and finally, there's the final plague, the tenth plague, which is the plague of the death of the firstborn of Egypt. So all the firstborn children um, of human beings, but also the firstborn of all of their animals as well, uh, died when the angel of death, uh, including the son of Pharaoh, died. Um, when, when the angel of death passed over, uh, and then Pharaoh uh, let them go. So that night, the Jews were in their homes. The, they had a, the blood of a lamb over their doorposts um, that signified that they belonged to God and the angel of death would not enter that home. They were saved by the blood of the lamb. Anybody see any foreshadowing there? Yeah. And in, not in the shape of a cross, but a cross in, in town, uh, sort of thing. So, so um, that's the story. Uh, but the, the, the Passover became not just the Egyptian Passover, it became a permanent Passover because God said, you will celebrate this uh, on the 15th day of Nisan, which was a month in Judaism, is a month in Judaism, uh, forever. Like, until the end of time, you will celebrate this. And the Jews still do, and they still have this, what's called the Seder Peace, uh, which was the meal that was eaten in Egypt. Um, and, and they recreate uh, that. So the afternoon of Nisan 14 was a preparation day to get everything ready. Because one of the things they ate was a lamb, so they, they, they would... Uh, kill a lamb, they would sacrifice a lamb, uh, and they would take part of that lamb home, part of that lamb, the entrails and the insides uh, were, were um, sacrificed on the altar. And then the family would go home and roast the lamb. Do you see any significance in the lamb being slain? And, and Jesus says, I am the lamb of God slain. Uh, and so again, we see this, this foreshadowing and this connection. So each family selected the lamb and took it to the priest, and, and the lamb was slain, and its blood was caught, uh, and the blood was sprinkled um, on, the, on the altar. Uh, it's a picture of, or kind of a drawing of what the altar might have looked like. It was big. Uh, and, um, and then uh, on the evening of Nisan 15, then they roasted the lamb and the ceremony begins. And every part of the ceremony has significance. Uh, it, it, every part of it harkens back to their time in slavery in Egypt. Uh, and so it's not, the meal isn't intended to be like, um, let's say you go out for your birthday or something and you're going to go, I don't know where you're going to go, check. Uh, yeah. They, they, the, the, the tagline for Chuck E. Cheese's Chuck E. Cheese, I guess, maybe, uh, was where a kid can be a kid. And I, and I, I after feel? taking, yeah, what? Didn't it fill up? It still up. But I changed it after taking my kids there, I don't know, maybe twice and saying, I'm never going to go there. Where a kid can be obnoxious. That's really what, it, what the tagline should be, because that's what happens there. Um, so it's it's not it's not it's not a feast in the sense of you get all this this food. It's a symbolic feast that that uh, every every part of it has something to do with their captivity. So uh, they have they have uh, the lamb. They're they're uh, eating just like we saw in John twelve. They're reclining at table. They're on these low cushions or benches. Uh, and they would they would recline on their left elbow, and then they would eat with their right hand, right? And uh, and so uh, they'd offer this this blessing. They would pour a glass of wine, and then they would uh, drink uh, a glass of wine uh, after that blessing. Um, and then a towel was passed around with a, a bowl that they would wash their hands again. This wasn't like oh we have to wash our hands before we eat. This was ceremonial uh, in terms of. Uh, cleaning their hands. That might have been when Jesus washed his disciples. We can't know that uh, for sure. Uh, and then they had this, uh, they had these bitter herbs 
um, that they would eat, and the bitter herbs signified the bitterness of their slavery in Egypt. Um, and then they would have unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is bread without yeast or any leavening that makes it rise. So it's like a flat bread, like a noan kind of bread. Um, and that uh, signified that they went when when um, I almost said see. When Pharaoh said, uh, oh, "Go, get out of here, go now," they didn't have time for their bread to rise, uh, and so they just took their unleavened bread and 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 left. Yeah. Um, I know a family that goes in Hebrew right now, and just when they have a Passover, it's like sprinkle it and they take out all the loaf bread, like clean all the bread, right? And that stores they like charts put over right like the loaf bread section, and the person takes out one and they touch the bread. Right. Right, and they, they, they actually get anything anything with leaven out of the house, and they and they sweep. They and the last thing they do is sweep all the floors and get so that there's not even one little you know speck of yeast or any leavening in the house. Um, so when I taught at another school, I'm not going to name names. Um, I uh, was in charge of student council. We need a student council. Thank you very much. Sir. I don't want to be in charge. I'm in charge of myself. So. Yeah, it's like a, it's like you know you have like class officers. Anyway, so you're telling um, me my classmates would be in charge of me? Sort of, a little bit. Um, so I was the student council sponsor, and um, we had a um, we had a big we had periodic bagel sales to make money. We get them from the bagel. That's amazing. Day. And um, I did not realize that it was a Passover. I did know, I did know that I had to go to the back door to buy the bagels, which is really ironic because they're not supposed to be in the bagels. But anyway, um, and and there was a teacher that got really mad at me about that, uh, and I and I apologized. I didn't realize I did that, but it, but she took it her faith very seriously, and and. Uh, and she was, you know, concerned about uh, Jewish students and, and this, you know, uh, this bagel sale. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, nothing having to do with leaven uh, in the house. Now, uh, I'm not sure that, that God said, well, yeah, he did. He said, get rid of everything. Uh, in, I think. Um, I'm not sure. So, um, so they offer the blessing. They, they drink this glass of wine. Uh, and then they'd have the bitter herb, herbs and the uh, unleavened bread. And then they have this, it, this calls it a special sauce. I made it once. I had, a, um, when I taught world religions, we have a, a Seder feast uh, when we were talking about Judaism. And it's like chopped up walnuts and apples and uh, there's some wine vinegar in there. And it's not, it's more like a, the subsistence or the consistency of... Uh, a really um, finely chopped up fruit salad than it is uh, like a, 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 a sauce. But they would take those herbs, and by the way, it would be so. Um, so, um, um, so, um, so it, it, it sort of uh, looked like the mortar of the bricks. And so that, that was symbolizing the mortar of the bricks that they had uh, to make um, and, and to build for a hero, Pharaoh, excuse me. Uh, and so they would, uh, they would dip that in that sauce and eat it. Uh, and um, it tells you here how you can make it if you want to know how to make it. I can, I can tell you. Um, and then uh, the head of the family um, dipped that the, the herbs in that heroset and prayed, uh, and then a small portion was given to each family member, like a, just a little teeny portion was given to each family member. Um, and then um, the unleavened bread was handed out, the lamb was brought in, there was another cup of wine that was poured, and more uh, prayers uh, as they sang the Hallel. So Hallel, ha, do anybody know what Hallelujah means? No, that's Hosanna. Hallel means praise. Hallelujah is to God. So praise God. Okay. 
Yah, the Yah part is God. Yeah. So the Hallel is a song of praise, and there are psalms that, are like the, the last five psalms, or ten psalms, are the final Hallel, and they are psalms of praise. So they would sing some of those psalms of praise uh, as part of it. Uh, and then the, the unleavened bread was also dripped, uh, excuse me, dipped into the hair set and, uh, and was eaten. Uh, this may have been when Jesus offered the, the sop or the, the dip to uh, Judas when he said, the one I'm handing this to is going to betray me. Uh, they drank some more wine and they sang the rest of uh, the Hallel, uh, the, the hill, hymns, uh, and then that was the, the ceremony. Um, so let's talk a little bit then again about the Passover lamb. Christ knew what was going to happen to him. And what, but what the, the disciples didn't understand was that the real Passover lamb was right there eating this symbolic Passover with them. Uh, and so it says this, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world uh, to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, uh, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, uh, okay, that's a word. Um, so this passage reveals three things that Jesus knows uh, at this point. Uh, he knows that his hour has come. Uh, the cross was not an accident. It wasn't a surprise. You're arresting me? No, he gave himself up for arrest. He knew what was going to happen. Uh, he, he said, nobody takes my life. I lay it down. I am giving up my own life. And then he also knows his betrayer and what he's about to do. He, know, he knew from the beginning. He knew from before he called um, Judas that what Judas would do. He knew he was that Judas was the betrayer. So he was fully aware of what Judas would do uh, that night. And then he knows his own identity. He knows who he is. Uh, he knows he is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that the Father has delivered everything into his hands, and that he will die uh, for the sins. Uh, but then he also knows that he will rise from the dead uh, and so let's talk just a, uh, let's talk a little bit about Christ's humility, and then we'll, we'll stop it. Uh, so this is uh, verses 4 through 11. Uh, Jesus rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? He answered him, What I am doing, I do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Uh, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you, for he knew who was to betray him. That is why he said, not all of you are clean. So um, it, was, it was common for a servant of the household to wash the feet of the guests. But in, in, in <laughs> most places, it couldn't even be a Jewish slave. That this, this washing of feet was so menial, was so debasing, that only a Gentile slave could do. Think about who it is that is washing the feet of the disciples. Um, and I want you to picture this, because for the disciples, this is unthinkable. It is shocking in the extreme. By the way, this is the only place in all of ancient literature where a superior is washing the feet. Everywhere else, it's only slaves that do. 
only slaves. All other ancient literature only pictures slaves. This is something that if somebody would have come up to him and said, Yeah, he's talking to Jesus, he's going to wash your feet tonight. There's no way. So this is unthinkable, which I think makes Peter, like what Peter says makes sense, not because he's somehow falsely modest, but because he's shocked. And this is his rabbi that's washing his uh, and, and interestingly, this whole thing follows um, on an argument where the disciples were trying to figure out who was the most important disciple. Who is the best disciple? No, I'm the greatest in the kingdom. No, I'm the greatest in the kingdom. Here is their God. Just a, a little while later. Washing their feet. They were stunned. In fact, the, the, it, it doesn't record anything. That this, the, the disciples say anything until he gets to Peter. You know why? Because they were stunned silent. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Uh, and so Peter rebukes him. You're, you're never going to wash my feet. There's no way you'll ever wash my feet. But Jesus' attitude was one of humility. This is one of the most, I'll stop here but, uh, after I read this, but this is one of those beautiful passages. Let us each look not only to our, uh, our only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, among yourselves, so in your community. Have this mind that was is yours in Christ Jesus, who, and now it's talking about Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. That means a thing to take advantage of. But emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. If the king of the universe is willing to come and live in this pit of a world, and not only live here, but be the lowest of the low, a, a manual labor, and, 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 and endure insults and hatred and and vilification and death out of love for us. What possibly can we do uh, to deserve that? We don't all we can do is love and worship and gratitude for what he has We'll stop there and uh, we'll pick up here.